Hey guys, it's Phil. So this is going to be a weird video because it's not sequential with anything I've done yet, but I have decided to flash up on my lovely, lovely Nexus 5 with um, Android L. Not the LP V37 that was released after Google I.O., but today we got an updated developer preview. This is an interesting developer preview because of two things. One, it is in fact called Lollipop. It labels itself as Android 5.0. And two, it's not googly enough to be a real Android version. Let me explain and I'll show you. So first what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, I already have my personal profile set up on this one because this is my daily phone and I use this phone as my main line of communication. And then I will show you the setup process through uh, the new multi-user uh, capabilities on L because that is the biggest thing. I have to say lollipop. If you want to keep a tally of how many times I say L instead of lollipop, not counting that one, feel free to and let me know in the comments if you uh, think you can catch them all. So first thing is I left a bunch of notifications from when I downloaded all the Google apps. So this is the new lock screen. It's got the, as you can see, the wallpaper behind it is one of those that got leaked earlier this week. So to the left, you have the dialer. To the right, you have the camera. And to the bottom, we have the home screen. So I designed this slightly like the new Nexus 6 with the creation folders and the play folders. And then the right is just my search widget or my play library widget. So I wanted to let you all know that it is a much more stable build. So if you have a Nexus 5 or a Nexus 7 2013 Wi-Fi, flash this one up if you can afford to lose some data and a couple of minutes setting it up. So the main thing is all of the animations are different from the other one, as you can see there. The big one I wanted to show you was this one. So as you can see across the top, the gear slides away. But then the biggest thing that everybody that understands how important quick toggles are, because it's nice, but you don't want to have to do two swipes down. Now Google has realized that, and then with two fingers, these two, straight into, there we go, come on, straight into your quick toggles. And they have changed the quick toggles. They have added a flashlight, finally, so that's nice. There's still the location toggle that toggles location directly. There's the cast screen, which lets you send your Android home screen to your Google Chromecast or the next one that will probably be called Google Cast. There is the rotation lock, and if it's locked in landscape, it will show you landscape and say landscape airplane mode. The uh, I'm with Sprint, so it's showing me my mobile data connection, which is turned off. That is why there's the exclamation point. And that's the other thing I'll get to in just a second. Then there's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You tap on the uh, text. It takes you to the screens and options for those. So the big change with data, as many people who have used pure Nexus Android before, is if you tap on it, it only ever takes you to the data screen. So this doesn't take you away from your home screen, as you see. It's still there. It's still in my notifications panel. But I can just turn it on, hit home. And as you can see, I have data now. So that's nifty. And then as you can tell, the, uh, the launcher is a little bit different. The biggest change being the new Google Now integration. As you can see, there's bars there. The menu is instead of being all the way at the bottom or a menu button press, it is off to the left, which lets you get to your reminders, to your settings for what things to track and so on and so forth. If you, It's the same options menu, it's just a little bit more materially. And then I will show you in a minute or two something special that came out, out of Droid Life that I will have linked down below. It is the update to search and the Google Now launcher that lets this be your launcher because new animations, new things. So last time on the developer preview, we only got two apps besides the setting men settings because that's part of the Android system. We had the dialer and we had 
the calculator that were material design. As you can tell by, um, well, these, there's markedly more. And I'll show you just how many more. So about that one, the new Play Store, it does not crash. It is updated specifically for Android 5.0 Lollipop. We have a new email app, a new downloads app. The clock is materialized. The calculator looks about the same. It just has a new icon. Contacts is included. And then the camera has a new stock entry screen, I guess you could call it. And then it's got a slightly redesigned, if it'll focus, icon. So let's launch the camera, actually. So it's bright yellow, very material. So hit next, it'll let you know about stuff, and then take you in. Let's see if the options menu is any more material than it was last week. Yeah, it's The camera app menu now is material. Save location, save location, and you've got the animations. And then if you scroll down or over scroll up, it'll do the shadow. So that's all well and good. Let's actually change that to high because I plan on using this for a couple of days to see what's wrong with it. Because I tried the developer preview for the previous version. Let's swipe all these away. And also, I think the multitasking animation is slightly different. They added an over scroll animation, which is nice. But also, I wanted to let you know that as you can tell, the shadows are in fact piling up. So it's all well and good. And then to clear them all, scroll to the bottom and hit that. And they all go away in a very, very classy, well, very artsy kind of way. So let's turn off data just to conserve some data. So that is the big thing. The um, new launcher, which will be linked below, and then the new search app, which updates the launcher, will be also linked down below, as well as an annotation here in this corner for the video on how to update your things, update your KitKat clad devices. Say that 10 times fast, KitKat clad. It's probably not as hard as I thought. Um, devices with that, and there may be force closes, but I will show you how to fix those. So if you want to download those and hold tight and skip to that video now, please come back. This one will be fun. Uh, okay, continuing. As I said, there is, uh, they got a new they redesigned a lot of the aesthetics of it. So they have a new brightness slider, and then instead of just staying in the panel, if you adjust it, the panel closes. Which is, it's nice, and then it comes back, so you can see what the wallpaper would look like with it, which is really useful. Settings menu is, I believe, identical. I didn't do enough digging around to know exactly what it was. But the big thing that they added in this one is, and I'm going to give you a teaser now, yeah, this works now, and this is not, like, this is a hack. This is not a hacked version of Android. This is not a rooted version of Android L. As you can see, there's no super user in here. There's no root on this phone. So, as I promised, the setup process, let's scroll down, and then get into users, and let's set up a new user. Come on. Okay, so this is the new user. We have to set them up. Let's do it. So there is the, you have at, you have been added to this phone. This will only show up, it'll show up a slightly different way because it's a secondary user. This phone's owner can uninstall your apps or remove your space completely. Any other users can accept app updates on your behalf. Let's continue. Also, you notice the material design of the setup screen. So, turning Wi-Fi on. So it's connecting to my Wi-Fi network now. So the login screen is very different. I'll sign in with a Google account later. Let's skip. And there we go. This is the page where you enter your name. Let's just enter my name and go to next. And then next. This is all nice and material. As you can see, the overscroll animation actually moves with where you pull it from as the finger. So I don't like where why if you ever get to set up your phone a second time or a third time or however many times you do it, um, turn off always scanning or uh, the one that reads letting apps and services scan for Wi-Fi networks even when Wi-Fi is off. That kills your battery unbelievably fast. Moving swiftly forward, setup is complete, your phone is set up and ready to use. So the thing that surprised me, you'll get this set, the, you'll get this little welcome wallpaper widget and settings touch to customize. 
you get that on the new launcher if you update from your old one, or if you set it up on your device running L. Lollipop, actually, the Lollipop developer preview. So you'll notice right off the bat, this is not Chrome, and that is not Hangouts. This is what threw me, and that's this is what I meant by it's not googly enough to be Android. So there's the Contacts app. There is the, because I haven't signed in with a Google account, authentication is required, you need to sign into your Google account. So this is all that comes installed on this version. You get the AOSP browser, which we all thought was dead, the calculator, the AOSP calendar, which does not update to the Google calendar like it used to on the Galaxy Nexus. We get the new camera, clock, contacts, downloads, and it's not called people anymore. It's called contacts now, which is nice. You have the email app, the AOSP Nexus gallery, which is interesting because that, suppo that was supposedly going away when Google introduced the Photos app that paired with Google+. And then we've got the new Search app with Material Design, which is gorgeous, as you saw. Then the new Google Play settings. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then the AOSP messaging. Messaging is making a comeback in Android L, Lollipop. And then you've got the AOSP Music Player. That was a big surprise. No, most people probably don't recognize this one, but this was last seen on the Galaxy Nexus when it first got unleashed onto us customers with ice cream sandwich on it back in 2010, no, 2011, 2012. And then we've got the dialer with a slightly lighter blue icon, if I am not mistaking that for anything. And then the new material design play store, and then the settings. So the dialer is and that's really nice if you it keeps it there and there but then for speed dial you can either bring it right up and that's really nice I think that's really really classy of Google so if you want to switch users sleep it you don't have to sleep it either that's the nice thing all you have to do is pull down select the user go to this one switching to that person if, if I had any notifications it would have kept them so that's really nice and then we're back to this so let's let's actually dig through a couple of the really, really cool things about material design in this. And I will tell you right now, Gmail is not updated with material design yet. It is still the boring old Gmail. Google Plus and Photos are still the same, so they're still nice. Contacts, I would show you if it didn't contain personal information. I might do some screenshots linked below just to show it off or you can find some other videos of it showing it because I don't want to put people I know on the internet just yet. YouTube is not material. Keep is as material as it was, honestly. It's still the same old stuff. And then Drive is just as material as it was before. Calendar is still boring and, well, not material. And then none of the play apps except the ones that already are material design are material. So Newsstand and the Play Store are the only ones that are still material. So. If you're one like me that really enjoys really, really tiny things and tiny details, if you have played with this yet, watch the three bars. And this is the same for the Google Photos app. It's really subtle, but it's really classy. I love that about this version. And then what else was there? There was... I really like the way they redesigned the clock because it's not black anymore. It's not boring. It, I mean, it was good on the on the eyes if you were setting it up late, but it was really kind of boring. So as you can see, the uh, icon changes as you move. Currently, it's set to Earth because you can select global times, and then stopwatch, and then a timer. So that's really nice. The new email app is just. It's the uh, email app that came on the Nexus 5 that's been material design. So also note, if you do try to pull any of these apps, they will not work on anything under Android 5.0 because that's what they're designed for currently. As well as the downloaded Google Search and Google Now launchers will not work on anything currently under 4.4. It'll only work on KitKat. So what else was there? There's the dialer with its moving thing. There's the settings with its nice little over scroll. And then something if you don't know where to find it, if you do have this and you hate it like I do, the, um, the vibration when you tap the 
navigation bar. So it would be in sound and notifications in the settings menu, and then go to other sounds, and then toggle it off, toggle it off, toggle it off, because I don't have my phone on anything but vibrate all day. So, and just as with tablets, you have user control. And then you can also set up a guest user. So if your friend needs to make a phone call and you don't want them getting into your stuff at all, then you can do that. The uh, developer options are just as per usual with the tapping seven times on this. And for those interested, this is build number LPX13D which means almost nothing. And as you can see, Android version 5.0, that makes me so happy. So I don't know if you've seen it yet, but the Easter egg for this is um, lollipop. You tap on it's a small circle, and then you tap on it and it opens up into a big lollipop. And if you tap it subsequent times, it changes color as the white balance adjusts. So it goes to purple and then back to brown and then orange and brown and yellow and it's okay. There's a secret in here you're thinking, right? Like the mosaic wall. Press and hold long. What's this? It's a game. You get a Flappy Droid game. You get Flappy Bird for Android, and it goes both directions. So you don't know which direction it'll start out going, but it's lollipop themed, and I'm awful at it. But that's, they put a whole game into the settings menu. That's pretty awesome. So. I think that's all there really is about Android 5.0 Lollipop Developer Preview version 2 that was released on Google's developer site today. The links to download the Google Search Update, Google Now Launcher Update, and the Developer Preview will be down in the description. In that order, actually, Search Now and Developer website. But until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy.